In this video, we'll be using Crown and Crane Aquadigio type shaving soap and the Red Imp 133 Rehoned. Stay tuned. Hey there, folks, and welcome back for another video. I'm your OCDB. Thanks so much for joining me again today. I really appreciate it. And as mentioned before, today we're going to be using a sample of Crown and Crane. This, this is Aquadigio. This was kindly sent to me by... Uh, a friend on Instagram, Brian. Thank you so much, Brian. This again is a new company to me out of Georgia. Really nicely priced uh, soap. This one smells like Aquadigio, the cologne. To me, a little slightly more powdery than your typical Aquadigio uh, scent. I'd call it about 3.5 to 4 on the scent strength. Not super heavily scented, but very nice. Uh, the price on this, $14.95 for 5 ounces. And on our cost chart, that is an exceptional $2.99 an ounce, so under, or excuse me, $2.99 an ounce, under $3 an ounce, which is a very good uh, price. And there's some good ingredients in this soap. Let me show you the ingredients shot right there. We got shea butter, we got some cocum, lanolin, aloe, some of the things that I really like. So today, we're also going to be experimenting with the edge. So I re-honed this yesterday, or at least uh, refreshed the edge on it. Well, actually, I killed the edge took it back to the 8K, brought it back, finished it on the Uzuku. But what's different is I'm gonna try this edge to begin with today for half my face, for one pass. Then I'm gonna try this uh, nano cloth with uh, diamond paste. This is uh, one micron, uh, which is about 16,000 grit. Just trying it. I know some people don't like these things. Some people do. You really can't uh, know until you try it. So we're just gonna try it. So let's just get started by misting the face there. And I'm just gonna do this side of my face first. Just sort of lather up only because I'm gonna do some stropping on the nano cloth after this sort of half pass. And then uh, we'll see if I can discern any difference in the edge after I use the nano cloth loaded with the one micron diamond spray, which is about equivalent to um, 16K in grit. We'll see. I really don't know um, what that will feel like or if I'm able to discern a huge difference. And the only way to know is to continue to test and see what happens. So first we'll see how the edge feels straight away and whether I did a decent job honing it. Yes, and that feels okay. Feels pretty nice. Feels plenty sharp enough. Again, this was finished on Izuku, which is my, you know, preferred JNAT honing stone. I also have a Shobodani that uh, Doug Bear is currently working with. And so I'm interesting. I'm interested to see how he fares with that stone. Let's uh, just touch this side up a little bit more. And then we will pause the video a little bit. We'll use the nano cloth and see if I can tell much of a difference. We'll use the nano cloth and follow it up with just a little stropping on leather. And then we'll just see what happens. So I shall pause and then we shall be back after I have uh, Strop just a little bit on the nano cloth and we'll see. Stay tuned. All right, we're back after having used the nano cloth with the one micron diamond paste and we'll roll with the other side of my face and see if I can discern a difference. I did strop a little bit on linen and leather after that, um, just to see. I just wanna see if I can discern any difference, it's it's worth trying, and I might experiment in many different ways with that. Um, you don't really know until you try, so let's see if we can discern any difference in the edge. I did not use the nano cloth a lot. Hmm. I think I'm feeling some difference. It's not night and day. But I think I am feeling some difference there. It feels slightly improved, but again, it's kind of difficult for me to tell.
in my head. I'm feeling like the edge is a little more keen than it was before, but I'm not 100% sure. But it doesn't feel bad. So I don't think, even if there isn't a significant improvement, whoops, got a little too close to the stash there. Um, I don't think there's been a de degradation in the edge, so I don't know if it's just strictly placebo effect, but I'm, I'm thinking that that feels a little nicer than it did before. Um, I can't say it's night and day, but we'll continue to experiment with that and see how it goes. Now let's continue on and we let's get into the soap. This soap is very well priced. Um, again, it's not one that I think a lot of people have used. I hadn't even heard of it until Brian mentioned it and kindly sent these samples. So thank you very much, Brian. Uh, it is good quality and the price is right. So it's well worth trying. If you haven't tried it, get on out and try it. Today I'm using the brush. Um, this is the PAA Amber Arrow Light, which has the Stygian, not very soft knot. It's 24 millimeters, but it seems bigger. <laughs> So it's sort of punches above its weight in terms of the way it feels size-wise. Very soft, and it's reminiscent of, in in terms of handle, the series of uh, handles that PAA makes based on ret um, retro designs or vintage designs. This one, inspired by the Erkskin B200. Nice knot, I do like it, nice brush. And as you can see, nice lather here from the uh, Crown and Crane soap. Again, a sleeper soap, in my opinion. One that has a nice quality to it, nice scent. I don't know that Aquadigio is available. I didn't see it up on the website, um, but it's nice. I, I don't think it's the best interpretation I've ever seen or ever experienced of Aquadigio, but it's pleasant and I do like it. And I think, um, based on my experience with Crown and Crane so far, I would say they are a company worth trying if you're looking to try a different sub company that, that maybe you've never heard of. And I really like to reward these companies that, um, you know, keep the cost down. And this is a quite an affordable soap. And so I certainly like that. So let's continue testing our edge here. Again, in my head, I'm thinking that I've squeaked out a little additional keenness in this blade, but honestly, I can't say that for sure. It feels that way, but I don't really know. So a couple of announcements. If you haven't seen the video where we're giving away the Strike Gold Shave hand tied knot, Go check it out. I will link that below. It's basically name the knot or suggest some names for that knot and you'll uh, be considered. Whoever we think, so Sharp David and I on Real Talk this coming Friday has the best suggestion, will win a hand tied knot from Strike Gold Shave. So thank you, Frank from Strike Gold Shave for generously providing the giveaway. And we'll be using the the very same hand tied knot, or not the very same, but a hand tied knot from Strike Gold tomorrow uh, in a shave. So we look forward to using that knot again. Thanks again, Strike Gold Shave. Frank Misa. He, uh, he has some good soaps. He puts a good edge on a straight razor. Um, he's sort of into everything, it looks like, right now. And my initial experience with Strike Gold was a little wonky. You know, you can go back and watch that first video. But uh, honestly, since then, I've had nothing but good experiences. And I have uh, liked his edges. I've tried two of his edges, and I've liked both. So, you know, just try things. Get out there and try things, which is why I'm trying this, you know, diamond paste today. You know, some people don't like nanocloth. Um, you know, some people don't like pace at all. They find it cheating and non-traditional. I'll try anything. I'm not setting, I'm not, uh, 
I'm not really married to any particular belief when it comes to honing right now. The only belief I'm married to is that everyone believes something different and you just need to try things. That's sort of where I'm falling is you're just gonna have to try things yourself and see what works best. Listen to the folks with the experience and then try it. Try what they're suggesting and see if it works for you. Um, but beyond that, none of my beliefs about hunting are set in stone because I haven't been doing it long enough. I'll probably, at this point, hone maybe um, 25 razors, so that's not a ton. Um, that's not really enough. I mean, I mean, I know just enough to be dangerous at this point. But each thing I try, I learn a little bit from. And, and uh, you know, I'm certainly not at the scientist's level. I'm not looking at microscopic images and all that. I'm just trying different things and then shaving with them. For, for me, shaving with the edge is the truest test. Um, you can use all the other tests you want, but I just want to know how it feels on my face. That's of chief concern to me. But many people do things differently and none of them were necessarily wrong. Because one guy will say, you can't ever do that. That's terrible. You'll wreck a blade and then somebody does it and it works just fine. So <laughs> you just don't know. A couple other things I want to mention. We also have the Pink Boys raffle, which uh, is Shave 326, the Traveling Shaver, and Marrying the Barbarian, raising money for cancer, breast cancer research. That is ongoing. I will link that effort below. And also we have Johan from Shave and Butcher, who has a, a fundraiser to raise money for Parkinson's ongoing. There's been a lot of charities. I'm hoping in November, <laughs> I know some people will take this the wrong way, but I'm hoping in November we sort of have a, have a period without charities. Um, so we can just shave a little bit. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, I'm charitied out. Charitied out. Like it's one fundraising thing after another. And so, uh, you know, but you honestly, you can never criticize, um, I don't think, people who are trying to, to do good. Or actually you can. I mean, if they have malicious intent or if they're trying to use it for self-promotion and so on, I can see that. But doing good is doing good. You know, so on the surface, it's good. But we have had a lot of charities <laughs> recently, so I hope in November we can just sort of maybe save some funds for Christmas and then we'll get back into charity uh, after the holiday season, uh, maybe, because things are tight for a lot of people right now. All right, there we go. The edge is, you know, working just fine. I would say this is not, I knew this was not my greatest edge of all time to begin with which is why I decided let's try that pace just to see what happens with it. Just to see if we, uh, you know, to see if it helped. I think it did. I, I can't really be sure though. That's the thing. I just can't be sure. There's, there's always the possibility that I'm sort of, I think there's an improvement and so therefore there is, you know. But the blade certainly is cutting. So, I do believe it did tighten up that edge a little bit. That much I believe. But I'm also one of these people that I'm fully aware, because I know especially early on, I would become convinced of things based on my preconceived notions. And so, um, it's always important to try to really keep an open mind, I think, about these things and just try it and see if it works. And so we'll continue to experiment with these things and see how they work. And I'll do some additional experimentation and maybe these, this nanocloth and the, the diamond paste isn't a good fit. Maybe it is, I can't really tell, but I think it did give me some additional keenness, but it's hard to say. I can't say it matter-of-factly. And that's sort of the struggle with a lot of these things as it applies to honing, especially because there's so many strong opinions. No, you should never do this. No, you should never do that, you know. 
And honestly, I've, I'm of the opinion, try it and shave the edge and see what happens. And if you like it, don't worry about what anybody else has to say about it. You know, if the edge feels good on your face, I think really that's the ultimate test. How does it shave? And so far today, it was a, a very decent edge. Nothing to complain about. I think the edge, once I put it to the, uh, to the paste, just felt a little bit smoother to me. It felt sharp, but it seemed to me like it was cutting just slightly better. It wasn't a night and day change, you know, but I didn't drop it a ton on there. Um, but I do think that I realized a little bit of benefit. So, I mean, we'll continue to experiment with that and see how it goes. All right, let's uh, rinse and then we'll come back with the post. Stay tuned. All right, and we are back with the magic made by witches. This is Thayer's Witch Hazel in a spray bottle. And that was a really nice shave. Um, I think the the diamond paste did make a difference in the edge. It wasn't night and day, but I think it did um, make a difference. So we'll continue to experiment with that. We use the Crown and Crane Aquadigio. Really good, decent quality uh, soap. It is worth trying Crown and Crane. The price is right. I enjoyed it. Thank you very much, Brian, for sending that. We used the PAA Amber Aerolite uh, brush with Stygian Knot. I really, really like that. It's working well for me. And of course, we used our Red Imp 133. We shall finish off today with Sterling Dunshire, which is a Aquadigio type scent. And we will have a great day, and I hope you will as well. Join us tomorrow, and we will be doing our 100th straight razor shave, which I'm really looking forward to. I'll bring out some special gear for that one. So thanks so much for joining me. As always, I've been your host, CDB, and I'm reminding you, it's your shave, do it your way. And as always, God bless.